Dr. Janet Kelly and Kelly Owens, uh, who were the, the, the presenters following, um, have agreed to come on early. So can we invite them to come along? So they're going to be presenting on improving outcomes for Aboriginal people with kidney disease. Janet works collaboratively with Aboriginal communities in urban, rural and remote areas to improve healthcare experiences and outcomes. And she co-leads the Action Aboriginal Kidney Care Together, uh, Improving Outcomes Now project, uh, which is a strong Indigenous and community governance um, and uh, response to the priorities of Aboriginal people living uh, with a lived experience in kidney disease. Kelly is a uh, Ghana, Narunga, and uh, Nigeri woman, and the mother of five. She is a community engagement coordinator for the National Indigenous Kidney Transplant Task Force and a member of South Australia's Action, um, uh, which, which is uh, the Aboriginal Kidney Care Together Improving Outcomes Now team. So over to you um, to take it off. Who is going to take the lead, Janet or, or Kelly? Thank you. Um, where now have you, we've shared screen. Yep, we can uh, see your screen. You can see that okay? Yep, all good. Excellent. Can hear you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for um, inviting us to join you. Okay, I'll just We're just getting ourselves organised. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Um, hello, everyone. Um, my name's Kelly Owen. We've called this presentation um, Burindi, which means to rise up in my Ghana language here in South Australia. Just sorry, go back to our acknowledgement. We'd like to acknowledge and pay respects to the Ghana people and traditional custodians of um, whose ancestral lands that we gather on here in Adelaide. We acknowledge the deep feelings and attachment and relationship of the Ghana people to country, and we respect and value their past, present and ongoing connection to land and cultural beliefs. I also like to acknowledge other First Nations brothers and sisters that are here with us today and ask for a moment of silence. Um, this is to remind us of our work that we've been doing here um, in Adelaide. Thank you. Thank you. We've, there's so many people that we've been working with who are real worries in this field, and we, yeah, we have a moment to remember them. Okay, now which slide are we up to? This okay. year, action mum. Oh, actually, go back. Yep. Okay, so the background. So we work with the Action Project, which is Aboriginal Kidney Care Together, improving outcomes now, and what it's involved is a coming together of many Aboriginal people with lived experience of kidney disease, many of whom who have been trying to make changes to identify the gaps in care. But as individuals, that was really difficult to get any traction to do that. So they've come together with staff and um, clinicians from the Central Northern Adelaide Renal and Transplantation Service. And those of us here in the research team in the um, the Adelaide, sorry, that should be Adelaide Nursing School, um, have come together. And so we've created the Action Project, which is committed to improving the health of Aboriginal people with renal disease, developing a culturally responsive health system, and promoting Aboriginal community health and wellbeing. So Action One, it started with um, the concerns of community, and we did a community consultation whilst we were writing the grant application. And so our priorities are all determined by community and we're able to secure an SA grant through Health Translation SA through the Medical Research Future Fund. So um, we look at Action One. What we did in 2018 is we got um, a group of Adelaide Nursing School and Kidney Health Australia people together and um, also the Central and Northern Renal Transplantation Services or CNARTS here in Adelaide. And what we did was hold a community workshop at Bangor Wadley Hostel and that's Aboriginal uh, managed and it's a culturally safe hostel. And basically we brought community together to find out what was happening, you know, um, and to hear the issues on the ground as people that sit in those chairs um, and are traveling this journey their voices were actually going to be heard. So 
from there, there was actually a reference group that was formed. Um, we did three community consultations around South Australia in Adelaide, in Port Augusta, um, which we see as regional, and then really remote is Sejuna here in West, and sorry, in South Australia. So then we reported back um, and informed the National CARI guidelines, part of those consultations. We also conducted patient journey mapping, um, and we had two annual workshops in 2019 and 20. Out of those workshops, we started talking about major issues that we were um, tackling in terms of transport and accommodation, especially from people coming from APY lands or whether they're coming from Darwin because we're the um, central corridor and um, you know they're off country and seeking treatment. Other issues that were talked about was about building capacity, you know, our workforce and dental, which is a major hurdle to get onto the active transplant list. Um, we were also co-creating new models of care. And so we actually were doing dialysis at the Aboriginal hostel Gangle Wadley, because that's what community wanted. Um, you know, it's a safe environment. They didn't have to come to big major hospitals. Um, and the other thing was the peer navigations um, project that was happening in Port Augusta. So that's some of the big things that we've been doing. It's been a really important part of this project. Community said, we don't want to get involved in another research project that does nothing. And so it's been very important that we actually do do things that actually have an outcome. So um, these changing models of care have been so important and working really closely with health services and managers and key influence makers uh, policy makers and influencers mm -hmm. who can help embed change. It's been really important. So the other things that we did, we've updated the patient journey mapping tools. We've updated a, a previous set that we did through Managing Two Wells together. We've been working with the National Indigenous Kidney Transplantation Task Force and Lowitcher Institute to look at cultural bias. We've written a cultural bias report that will help influence policy and ongoing about kidney transplantation for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. There's some croaky articles where we've got community voice loud and strong in there. So Kelly, you co-authored that with Kim O'Donnell. So that's great been experience. really great. And we have been successful in getting um, an NHMRC grant, an ideas grant. And so some of the community members who were on the reference group, like Kelly, are now chief investigators. So action to going forward is well and truly being governed by community. And this is one of our team photos, whereas we see humour as our superpower and, you know, it really does help with our healing journey. It also, um, the endorphins that come with it and having a good belly laugh, you know, you can't beat that. Oops, sorry. Okay. So this is our map where we're heading. So in here, it talks about who we're working with um, in terms of community, SAMRI and other key stakeholders. Action one is where we've come from, but we're transitioning now into action two. And a part of action one was really building our relationships and our trust with different people, um, whether it's researchers or coordinators or those decision makers that have really um, opened doors for us and help to elevate our voices and listen, and then there's action actually happening in return there. We have um, four sub-studies that we're going to be focusing on in action two. So the first one is Indigenous governance. Uh, second is our kidney journey mapping. Third is support for Aboriginal um, kidney care patients. And the fourth and really important is the cultural safety in kidney care. So a lot of the work that we do is very much working at the interface. How do we bring community and health services together? How do we bring Indigenous and Western concepts together? Very much based on the relational networks that we build and maintain, continuing to work with key organisational networks and key stakeholders, and really deepening Indigenous governance and what that means, the structures, the processes, the decision-making, the leadership, the sustainability, and we see within the nursing school here, now we have six Aboriginal researchers coming in. It's actually changing the school as well, as well as changing the health service. So it's, I, I see my non-Indigenous colleagues realising different things. So we're also working on a working together agreement that will help guide our work over the next five years. And this is a living document that starts um, with the action reference team, the community members, and then the research team. So very much following that Indigenous governance 
framework. And continuing, uh, we're working collaboratively on position descriptions. So rather than having a top-down idea of what everyone's positions within the team are, it's much more of a negotiated discussion about how we choose to work together. It is. It was looking at our goals and from those goals, being able to talk about where we felt our role and our skill sets lay and how we narrow in on that. That's, that's what it has been different. Yeah, it's been good. Um, and then we have quite an extensive research team from Action 1 and Action 2. Yeah. So you can see from Action 1, um, we only had one chief investigator, Dr Odette Pearson. It was um, yeah. Yeah, Aboriginal, uh, sorry, Torres Strait Islander lady. In the research team, we did have Kim O'Donnell. But now if we look over to Action 2, we've flipped it in terms of chief investigators. But our associate investigators have also come on and been able to give up um, that space and help to be able to be there for support and assistance. Um, but we still got the, it's a strong reference team as well. Yeah, it's mm. been really good. We, we never intended for Odette to be the only Indigenous Chief Investigator. It's just what ended up happening through a series of events, but so mm. much more purposeful in action too. That's it. Yeah, great. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, dead on time as well. Uh, so thank you. So any questions have no come questions. up? Oh, we're on mute. Are we? No, 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 we're no, we're good. Um, let's check the chats. No questions. So uh, no questions have come up. It was uh, enough information there that got everybody uh, going. Yeah. And so is there is there much of a backlog for access to dialysis down there? Oh, nationally, you know, we've got an epidemic over our nation, um, you know, the wait list, we've got people doing three lots of shifts in a dialysis unit. We've got so many people having to come to metro areas to, to be hooked up to a machine where we're looking at community models of care, training up our own mob to care for our own mob on country. That's what we really want. Mm. Yeah. Right. We didn't have to be on the machines to begin with, but that's what we want. We should course. have one question, sorry, Tom. Oh, we did have one question before. We from someone in our audience that's um, asked if they are open for collaborations on oral health care. Definitely. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, we've got a couple of different things happening. We're working with oral health students who are training in TAFE. We had a meeting this week, we're going to try and get them there to do some clinical placements at Genga Wadley, but we're continuing to look at this space very much so. Thank you very much, 